Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk just a little bit about the U.S. election, which is coming up next week. Now, we've got an interesting matchup this time around, and it's kind of a surprising one that nobody expected a year ago. Um, well, it wasn't nearly as surprising as people uh, think it, it was, because the media uh, played it up, and of course... Uh, there's been all sorts of allegations of uh, malfeasance and rigging and so on and been directed at internally and externally. It's Basically, it's been a big mess. Now, the choice seems to be down to whether Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton is going to be the next U.S. president. Uh, Although the media seems to have forgotten that there is a chance that a third party candidate could win. And given that, that the United States electoral system mostly uses first past the post voting uh, for the individual districts, it could be an interesting thing because depending on the protest votes and how many there are, it could erode the support for the uh, the third the third or, or the the main party candidates enough that a third party candidate wins enough districts uh, to actually put the uh, uh, the third party electors into the electoral college and that in itself would be an upset and that would uh, that would get the pundits talking for years probably uh, it kind of, it's kind of like the uh, tempest in a teapot we had uh, years ago in Canada when uh, the Liberals and the NDP were trying to form a coalition to take down the Conservative government at the time. And uh, we had that whole debate about proroguing Parliament, uh, where the Prime Minister asked the Governor General to prorogue Parliament long enough that he could at least present a budget. And then, if the uh, opposition wanted to defeat the government, he would be fine with it. And in that case, I happen to agree with the Governor General's decision, and it, we had that big brouhaha, and then the coalition fell apart in the intervening six weeks. Uh, but it had people talking for months about, did you know that this is actually legal? Uh, it's not been done, but it's legal. It can be done. And, uh, people learned a lot about how the Canadian system of government works. The things that we thought we knew, turns out they're not leg legally binding, they're not laws, they're just traditions. Now, the U.S. system, the Americans themselves are well indoctrinated into the notion that they have a two-party political system. They don't. It's just traditionally there's two parties and that eliminates the uh, split vote problem for the most part. And then you generally end up with a solid win for one party or the other. And that's often a better result. But the United States is not a monolithic collection of people that all believe the same thing. The, the country's huge. It can't be. It's got diverse backgrounds. So it can't be a monolithic set of people that believe the same thing. So the two-party system doesn't really represent the diversity of the nation. Um, another, any number of parties probably wouldn't. But what it does mean is that if enough people who felt disenfranchised decided to, uh, they could turn up and, and vote for the third-party candidates. Uh, and if enough voted for the for the same one, 
that third party candidate could win. And even if they didn't win, if they had sufficient votes in the right setup, they could have representatives in the Electoral College. And that would definitely be an upset. To get even that far would make the news. And it would say something about the viability of the main party candidates, if it happened. And if we had a substantial fraction of the Electoral College that was uh, representing some other third party, even if it isn't the same one, that would say even more. Now, that's not to say I think that's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen because the Americans themselves are so invested in the notion of a two-party system that it won't occur to most of them. Even if they're told it's a possibility, it won't occur to them to vote for a third-party candidate. But wouldn't it be interesting if the third-party candidate won? That would be absolutely amazing. And it would be chaos. Anyway, since it's not likely to happen, it's going to be Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton. And neither one, quite frankly, is a good choice. Hillary basically is angling for World War III, and Trump is a wingnut. So, which one would you choose? Well, we know essentially what Hillary wants to do. And we know that she's corrupt. Uh, there's enough evidence out there that uh, it's, it's almost certain that she's corrupt. And she's made of Teflon. So the corruption's not sticking. Uh, Trump, well, he's... His whole shtick is getting out there and behaving like a moron. And it's working. Uh, he's kind of got this tell-it-like-he-sees-it um, uh, image uh, where he'll, he'll make, uh, you know, comments that really don't fit. You know, they don't fit reality or they're certainly not politically correct. And I think that's actually why he's done as well as he has is because he's basically told the political correct stuff, the people pushing political correctness, to go stuff it. And uh, he's just, he's decided he's going to say what he wants to say and hang the consequences. And I think that's why he's played so well in the polls compared to what you would think he should be doing. Now, I don't think he's anywhere near as stupid or out of touch as his public persona would seem to suggest. If he was, he couldn't have got where he is today. It, it just wouldn't have happened. And even if he is that stupid and out of touch, he's got to have people around him who aren't. So, quite frankly, I don't think he would do much of what he said he would do, or suggested or implied he would do, if he gets elected. And quite frankly, I don't think he can in a lot of cases, because Congress won't let him. There's a lot of stuff he's going to have to get Congress to sign off on before he can do. And that will make a big difference. That will put a check on what he can do. Uh, so... If Trump wins, I really don't think it will be as bad as people think it will. I'm not saying that this is a good option. I, I'm not saying that. I don't think it's a good option. I do, however, think Hillary Clinton is a worse option. Because she seems to be a warmonger. And we do not need more warmongers in power anywhere. Warmongers are a bad choice. She seems to be advocating for going in, 
and getting involved in more conflicts around the world, expanding American adventurism. And while that's consistent with American history, uh, Americans won't necessarily agree with this, but the American empire is one of the most bloodthirsty, most conquest-hungry empires in history. And do your own research if you don't believe it. Just because they haven't actually gone and physically taken over a whole huge pile of land doesn't mean they aren't running other countries it doesn't mean they haven't taken over politically. But take a look at the wars they fought between them with Mexico, with the rest of British North America before Canada uh, gained uh, any semblance of independence from Britain. Uh, take a look at, at the, the wars they've got involved in over the, the years. Some of them may be justified, but the war with Mexico probably wasn't, at least initially. Uh, look at what they did to the Native Americans. I'm not saying that, that Canada was any better necessarily, but take a look at what they did in in, when they uh, pushed west. Take a look at a great many things in American history and then think about it. The Americans have been one of the most conquest-hungry nations in history, even though the world map doesn't show it. And it should worry anybody that a warmonger might get in the White House. It's hard enough dealing with the political pressure coming out of uh, Washington. Uh, it's, it's hard enough dealing with that, backed by one of the largest standing armies in history, when there's a relatively peaceful group of people mostly in charge, add a warmonger at the top, and quite frankly, everybody should be worried. Now, uh, do I think that there's going to be a big war if Hillary wins? Probably not. I think, just like with Trump, Congress will actually put a few checks on her, uh, that she won't be able to do some of the things she wants to do if she persists with some of the other things she wants to do. So uh, hopefully, either way, there will be some checks on what they do. But of the two of them, I think probably Trump is the better choice. And I know a great many people are going to disagree with this assessment, and that's fine. Uh, that's that's every, everybody's uh, entitled to disagree. I just don't want Hillary in the White House, uh, and it's not because she's a woman. Let's just clear that up right now. I think she's more corrupt and a warmonger. That is why I don't want her in the White House. But the Americans, the American people, will, will make their choice next week, and everybody around the world will be watching with bated breath, and we'll see what happens. It will be really interesting to see if the financial markets and so on have learned their lesson from the summer um, where they had uh, predicted that it would be a slim majority for remain in the Brexit vote 
and you got a slim majority for leave as the actual result. And the markets and the bookies and everybody had priced into everything that it would be a remain vote, and then it turned out not to be. And it caused chaos in the financial markets. Here's hoping that this time around, Nobody has staked out massive positions on any particular outcome for the U.S. election. Here's hoping they actually waited until after the election to panic. Um, and here's hoping they haven't, like the whole financial market hasn't gone in one direction and then find out that the election went the other way. I don't hold out any hope that the uh, financial market types have learned a lesson. I, I suspect that the markets are priced right now with the notion that Clinton wins. So it will be interesting if Trump wins to see what happens. Will we see a plunge in the U.S. dollar as a result? Will we see general stock markets crash? Will we see the uh, New York Stock Exchange uh, tank? Will we see uh, a mass exodus from U.S. dollars into Chinese yuans or uh, into euros or uh, you know any other currency? Maybe Deutsche Marks. That would probably be a better choice, actually. Uh, Certainly not pounds, not sterling. Um, that wouldn't be a good choice right now. There's too much uncertainty over Brexit. And if you add a bunch of uncertainty in the United States, what's that leave? Probably Deutsche Marks. Uh, but who knows? Uh, it will be interesting, though, to see what happens. And I will be keeping an eye on the results as they come in just to see. Uh, what happens? Uh, I'm not going to lose any particular sleep over the result because, well, whatever is going to be the result will be the result, and then the world will deal. Uh, like Just like I wasn't particularly happy when the Liberals won in Ottawa last year, uh, I, I'm not uh, particular. I, I won't be particularly happy with either outcome south of the border. It. it uh, We'll see what happens, and then we'll deal. But, really, uh, it's an election. They have them every few years in the States, and things always change, uh, somehow. Uh, so, uh, anyone who's surprised that there might be a change in uh, power, in the power balance in the United States as a result of a presidential election... Well, quite frankly, they're stupid. This is always a possibility. So, there you have it. Uh, that's my ramble on the upcoming U.S. election. Uh, and, well, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.